everyone, rather than go here and here, back more room to the where we mastered as Britannia. We were just starting to get our feet beneath us, and originally I had hoped that this army would be going east already, but I'm pretty sure it needs to come south. We have next to nothing going on against Skull right now. We just need more units down here. And we hadn't actually handled Elysia last time we played, so we need to make a shrine to Andraste here. In terms of units, ugh, right? Like, not a lot going on here that I actually want. I suppose I will retrain the Spearman and recruit a new one. It stresses my economy so much more than I would like it to, but I don't have much of a choice. And now that this city has grown, I can crank its taxes from low all the way to very high. Which is another 400 gold a turn that I desperately need. And next turn, I'll be able to ferry over several more Woad Warriors, which will be nice. My diplomatist can continue his trek southward, looking to find the Julia and eventually all the other Romans. And my spy is going to continue trying to figure out what exactly Germany is doing. The answer is that they've massed most of their starting armies on their western front, which is not something I'm happy to say. It almost certainly means that they plan to dial me, because very hardy AI tends to go for the player over literally anyone else, so it's hard to imagine they're going for Gull. Yes. Now, since I have overwhelmingly positive opinions about chariots, I am actually just going to try to head south to Lugdunum with these units only. Worst case scenario, I figure I'll have to retreat. I doubt I'm going to lose this army. But I might also get a very meaningful head start on conquering the next city. But that's it for this turn, so let's see what's happening in the next one. And also, probably very importantly, how much money am I actually making a turn? Ah, Germany moved their army to the east. That makes me feel a lot better about things. I'm making almost 3,000 a turn at this point. That is much more manageable. That's actually very nice to say. Unsurprisingly, I am being spied on by Gaul and Germany. Thrace and Mass are at war, Armenia and the Seleucids, Julia and Carthage, all, you know, standard. Nothing else of note. Yes. Let's continue heading south and try to figure out what Lugdunum is up to. It's being sieged by the Gauls! Yes. Which means I can't siege it, and I can't walk around it to fight them. That's rather annoying. General. I'm just gonna back off, I guess, and wait for my units then. Because yes. there's not really much else I can do. Lord. And at this point, we have a pretty meaningful yes. army starting to rack up over here. Orders. These slingers can come try to join it, I suppose. Oh, Gauls coming! These slingers might want to hide in the woods, which isn't going to work. They're going to retreat, treat, probably. The fact that I couldn't continue south because the city is under siege upsets me greatly. Regardless, let's handle infrastructure real quick. Woad warriors need to get onto boats. They need to cross the sea. Start heading south, where they can join it with more woad warriors and more generals. The boat comes back, and I start sending these road warriors south to get on the boat in a few turns. These men might actually be getting on the boat and heading west themselves, looking at it, to go fight this army and then head down the west coast. And in fact, that's probably what I will be doing with them. Now, the most important part of the turn is I need to build road warriors in every single one of my settlements, which is thankfully pretty cheap. It's only 380 a settlement. It's not that expensive. In terms of infrastructure... I could make the blacksmith in Londinium right now for infrastructure, but Londinium is so much further away from my warfront that I kind of want to build a trader in Elysia instead. And I'm actually going to. That honestly feels more relevant. Orders. And awkwardly, that's kind of the whole turn, except for going to find the Julii and sell the map information. At this point, I want to bring my spy back to start watching for Gallic troop movements down here. I'm convinced that Germany is going to war with me, but they're also doing a bad job of it at this point. So that's it for this turn. Let's see what happens in the next one. Oh, Gaul, what are you doing? I, th I thought they were going to push north. Where are they going? They didn't even attack my ambush. They're just like, oh, I guess we're done walking. Yes. Why, Gaul? Yes. Okay, so this man actually does need to get on the boat and head along the coast. These men are going to head south. Pathfinding is so bad sometimes. It's so bad sometimes. 
But they're going to get on this boat, and the boat's going to drop them off along with this wood warrior getting trained next turn on this army, and he can start pushing down the west coast of France. And now we have an actual army here, ready to go fight Lugdunum in a couple of turns. And a couple of turns sounds pretty shit, doesn't it? It looks like if I do this, I can start the siege next turn, and it will save me a little bit of time, so I'll be doing exactly that. Germany and Gaul are allies, that bodes very well for me. Can't wait to see how that pans out. And Gaul still hasn't finished their siege against Lugdunum, but thankfully they can only hold out for two more turns at most, so it can't possibly waste that much more of my time. Now this slinger is awkward. I'm going to put him in the city, and he'll join up with the army when the army gets here. That seems like the best thing I can do with them. And once again, this has sort of just been a nothing turn, where I move units around but don't accomplish anything. But I can finally start trying to sell things to the Julii. Would you consider... Excuse me? You think my shit's that worthless? Would you consider... Alright, I'll take 510 denarii, I guess. Our thanks. Go try to sell the same shit to the other Romans. And since I have money lying around, now I can build some more infrastructure. Namely, I can build a blacksmith in Londinium. Everything else is sort of secondary and not as important. This port is worth 637 a turn, and it only costs 800 to make. So let's go ahead and make a port in Samaro Breva. That might be worth doing. The rest of this money, however, I'll be saving. I know I need to make more Woad Warriors next turn. I'm worried I'll be out of money if I spend it on things now. So, let's see what the next one has for us. No great surprise that Gaul is laying siege here despite their terrible army. That was surprising. I don't know why Gaul left Lugdunum. Wasn't expecting that at all. Macedon and Scythia are allied? I guess Thrace is just dead this campaign. On my way. I should have walked in here to try to pop the gates open, I guess. Oh well. This turn we start the siege, we build some rams. Next turn we'll actually take the settlement. Now we hop all three of these road warriors onto the boats. We can see they get to pretty much the exact same spot whether they go by boat or land, which is kind of funny. At this point the boat's no longer helpful, so I'll start sending it back to function as a ferry again. And as always, we'll start these men walking down. I have these world warriors head south, because I want them actually manning Elysia, because I'm worried Elysia might actually fall relatively soon. And as always, in all of my cities, I produce world warriors. That can't possibly be my whole turn, can it? Alright, that's my whole turn, so I'm going to build mines here in Deva. Because I've still got 2,000 floating from last turn, I figure I won't need it in the near future, because all the mercenaries here are shit anyway. And I'll come try to sell some Mavnifo to the Senate. Would you consider? <laughs> no thanks, Until Mr. Senate. Next time. You can talk to somebody else. Would you consider? Nope. Until next time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep heading down the coast and try to find someone who's less of a dick. And that's it for this turn. There have been a lot of real slow turns at the start of this episode, haven't there? And Gaul just broke the siege immediately. That's kind of funny. So this army was... Well, I guess I'm going to find out the hard way, but it's walking into it, huh? Evidently weaker than my army. Oh, yeah, they're terrible. They are so dead. I can hire barbarian cavalry mercenaries, and I probably will. But not this turn, so I don't need them yet. I'm going to have this man continue moving southwest and try to figure out what exactly Gaul is doing with all its troops. The answer is manning Narbo Martius for some reason. Then we got four units of Spear Warband in here, and I don't know why. All right, so in terms of infrastructure, this turn, I guess it's time to make a blacksmith in Elysia so I can start making chariots in the south. And since Samaro Breva has grown, we can make a blacksmith here as well to produce chariots here. And that means that in three turns, we'll be producing chariots three at a time, and our ability to produce military will ramp rather substantially. The only problem being that it's all the way up here, and by the time we're doing this, we'll probably have conquered the nearby Gallic towns. So we'll be forces into Germany, and once we start this war with Germany, they'll just be very far away with a very long reinforcement time. 
Like, we've already seen that just sending reinforcements from Samaro Brima to Alicia is two full turns. It's not fast to move out of Brennan. I don't think Brennan's a B-tier faction. I think they're the absolute bottom of A-tier, though. It's not that anything they're doing is weak. They're very strong. It's hard to lose with them, I feel like. But their economy is so weak, you're doing this weird gimmicky shit where you produce road warriors at half the speed other factions producing their units because they take two turns to make. Their economy is so weak, it takes a while to get chariots going, and they're so far out of the way that your reinforcement times are just terrible. They're definitely not a bad faction, but I don't think they're even close to S tier. And I think the top A tier factions like Germany are substantially better than this. But they're not bad, it's just... This is literally the first campaign I've played where I've had this many dead turns. It's turn nine. I've only conquered two cities. I'm about to take my third. It's just a very slow by comparison to everything else I've ever played in Rome. Anyway, enough lollygagging. Let's get into fighting the siege. These guys don't stand a chance. It's literally spear warbands and light cav. Let's wipe them out. Is there something I just realized that sort of cracked me up? I already knew this. With chariots, your general just takes up an extra slot on the chariot. It seems really hilariously lazy. It's like if on a cavalry faction, your general just rode on the same horse as someone else. It really seems like he has no reason to be here and is contributing nothing. So, as always, range units move up to push people off the gate. Rams knock holes in various places to make sure they can't all be defended. Pretty straightforward. It's going to be a very simple siege. We've done this one a million times before. And pleasure. So I'm just going to hang out until this man realizes he should stop being here. He's lost half his unit so far. Probably should get out of here. Oh, whoa. That apparently was enough to trigger them to be angry. I want this spear warband running forward and another one getting behind it. In case these cavalry actually come after my woad warriors. These guys are exhausted, so I expect my Woad Warriors to rip them apart. I just don't want them to be engaged while they're taking projectiles. Oh, I'm slightly too far over it on here. He just moves slightly to the left, apparently. This seems very silly and very wrong. And now he's out of range, so we're going to stop and count to, I don't know, like 10? Oh, yeah, actually, didn't come back this time. Oh, there he goes. Never mind. I guess I should have counted to 15. I'm going to go get some water. I'll be back with you once this unit doesn't exist. Okay. It looks like there's a whole lot more corpses in front of me than there used to be. So, that bodes well. I see slightly too many flags, though. There's 19 left, but they're basically done. So let's get everyone into the city and figure out our next step. So I'm trying to get my general to come hang out with my units, and I just fucking can't. Because there's 62 chariots in here. And, like, it doesn't fit in the city anywhere. This is the closest I've got, is I can put him right here, where he'll be engaged in the fight, basically. So... There's some major downsides to chariot generals when it comes to sieges. They're just awful to move around inside buildings, or inside settlements, rather. Okay, that last move finally got them to come forward. And now I need to move everyone else forward so that I can get in position around what I expect them to be doing. I can't get my general in position, but I can run the druids forward who give a similar morale buff, I think. And I don't know what I can do with these slingers because of how this area is raised, but I'm going to try to find something to do with them. Okay. Actually, I want the other warband to charge and this one to just stop. So these barbarian calves should be utterly fucked at this point. I'm doing a surprisingly decent job of not being dead. 
Okay. Goats make good eating. To avoid catastrophic losses, I need to pull everyone back now. Otherwise, they're going to walk into the square and start a real fight. All right, and again, as soon as they start routing, I have to just keep doing this. You have killed the enemy general. I thought that was my general dying. <laughs> Even though I know my general's on a chariot. That is... I was just sure my general was some dude on foot who had thrown his life away. All right, guys, come on. Throw your lives away. Stop wasting my time. One more. Come on. I don't get the AI. I mean, I understand the AI, but I don't know why it's doing what it does. All right, so my plan is to line up here and get ready to fight them. I don't know if it's going to go according to that plan. It tends to fail pretty badly when I move near squares, but I believe... But actually, we haven't triggered the AI to do anything yet, so that's a really good start. Now, since I can't actually move my chariots in a city, I'll be using these Woad Warriors as though they were cavalry. Which doesn't sound good. I'm gonna have all of these guys scream. I mean, you may as well. And now we're gonna throw rocks at the Warband over here, and that should bait them into charging. Yeah, I'm taking some wounds, because... That's just how projectiles work. Or how slings work, rather. They don't seem interested in leaving the square. There we go. And all they have, we can charge in. And we can charge with this as well, and that's the fight. There's so many dudes. <laughs> I probably should have canceled my slingers. Um, how many people died from my slingers? Okay. Apparently not that many, because with casualties regained, we're at less than what the enemy dealt. They probably only killed like a dozen or so men, but it felt like I might have murdered literally a hundred of my own spearmen. This city is very small, so I'm going to occupy it. Because... If I occupy it, I can destroy the shrine in it, build the shrine to Andrasta, and start making wood warriors here. Which is comically effective. And for garrisoning the city, I'm just going to leave behind my most decimated unit of spearmen. This guy's just a city garrison now. Push off the gulls. And can we actually reach them? We can, so let's kill the gulls. Now, honestly, I'm going to try to win this using mostly my light chariots as worse archers. I don't know how well I can do this, but I'm going to try. Because, I mean, they are since oh, the AI is just going to let me do this. So I'll be back with you in a long time. I was going to talk about how these are basically really bad horse archers that fire at one fifth the rate and move very clumsily, but it turns out the AI is not interested in exploiting that weakness, and I just gained a chevron from target practice here. Very silly. This is going to take me like two minutes in real time, even at triple speed, so... Be grateful I edit, I guess. We're at halfway through our ammunition, and we failed to even wipe out half of one unit, which is pretty rough, honestly. So I'm going to let my guys regain stamina, and then I'm going to start trying to circle them to get better shots without hitting their shields. Or to cluster them more so it's easier to hit more than one person. It's just not going super well right now. As far as horse archers go, this has been a pretty damning condemnation of that. Alright, now they're actually moving around a bit. Which is good, because at this point I'm really more trying to tire them out for my other units than trying to kill them with the chariots. These are so much harder to do than horse archers. Oh, man. Like, it's still easy, but I feel like I can fuck it up so much faster than I could with horse archers. Also, just if I had two units of horse archers, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to wipe out three units of Spear of War Band, but in this case, it's like, oh yeah. You know, you've dealt 25% of their casualties. I think we get past. We might lose one chariot. Oh, 
So, this is definitely just me messing up pathfinding and not being fully aware where my units were. But because Chariots have multiple hit points, uh, it's worked out. I didn't realize I was all the way on the edge. What are you doing? Where are you fucking going? Oh, man. Chariots just do not have the best ability to pathfind. They're so big and they're so clumsy and they can't turn for shit. They're still good units, but they're very frustrating to use. Kind of like a phalanx, I guess. They aren't like Hestati or horse archers where you tell them to do a thing and the thing just happens. There's a lot more effort that goes into using a chariot, which I don't like. Because it's not that they're tactically more difficult, it's that they're just bad at following your commands a lot of the time. Okay, so what is our stamina looking like on these dudes? Very tired, exhausted, very tired. That, to me, sounds like it's time for my generals to come mop this up. Oh, there! this guy's routing. We need to run him down, then. No, I wanted to select the other one. No, I told you very specifically to do the opposite of that. Okay. So chariots are so good that even when I'm telling them to flee and they're exhausted, they're still routing the enemy units. That seems normal. The enemy flee from the field like frightened goats. <laughs> they didn't give dialogue for that. It's like, yeah, here's a dead captain. Fuck him. Speak to our warriors. As far as chariots as horse archers, pretty terrible. But chariots as cataphracts? They're doing upsettingly well in that regard. And I guess at this point, we just continue our southern march all the way down to Massilia. We can hire some mercenaries. We don't really need them this turn, though. My plan, I think, is to cut from Massilia east and start taking over the Alps. And let this army sweep down to Narbo Martius eventually. That might not work super well. I can imagine Narbo Martius being used to launch offensive attacks to the east. But if I'm sending a reinforcement army down to go towards Rome eventually, they should be able to relieve any pressure on Lugdunum and Massilia in the future. So I think this is actually pretty well set up to eventually conquer Spain and Rome and have chariots being produced. Now that the city finally has population in it with which to recruit units though, I'm going to destroy this shrine of theirs. I'm going to build the shrine to Andrasta, and they can start joining the Woad Warrior Parade. And that's it for this turn, I believe. There's a spy somewhere that I've forgotten about. Nope, already moved him. Unlike my diplomat, who can come further south. So I believe what's happening here is that the Romans must share map information with each other, so I can only really sell map info to one Roman faction. In which case, I'll just try to get, you know, trade Will rights with consider? them. And for 240, that's probably worth doing. Our thanks. I'm gonna do the same with the Senate. Would you consider our thanks? And I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna bother with the Broody Eye. I have enough trade partners at this point that I can't imagine I need to trade with the Broody Eye as well. Especially knowing I'll probably be going to war with these guys in about 10 turns. And I believe that's it for the turn, so let's see what's happening over the interim. Carthage and Spain are at war, Egypt and Armenia are allies, so Seleucia fucked, as always. Nothing else interesting happening over the intern phase, and I'm going to be calling it here for now. I've been Rather Coherent, this has been Britannia, and if you like the video, then please like, comment, and subscribe, because it really helps the channel grow. And either way, I'll see you in the next one.